Hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jean-Pierre uh, Jean Lenné and I had the privilege to lead a, a project named Compatible One. And from this project, uh, I have the other privilege to now run a company called Cloud Orbit based on this project. And I will try to explain the path from open source project, collaborative project, to uh, industry uh, company. So first of all, thanks a lot for the Oce Ocean community to have uh, qualified uh, the, the quality of uh, Compatible One. Thank you very much. And thank you for uh, letting me the, the floor to explain all that. So because we are thanking everybody, Let's also thank all the participants to the projects and all the sponsors, which have been uh, very useful to, to get where we are. Where did we start? In fact, we start a long time ago. In 2009, with the first e edition of Open World Forum, which I was running, and with the RW2 Open Source Cloudware Initiative. Something I had the privilege also to lead with uh, Cedric and uh, other, um, other members of the OW2 community. And this, this idea in uh, 2009 was, let's say, naive about um, is open source and cloud computing compatible? Are, are they of the, of the same nature or isn't there a risk for open, stu open source to be diluted in the cloud computing. So this, this was the kind of thinking we had. And it was based on very simple reasons. If you look at who uh, invented the cloud in, uh, let's say, uh, in the industry, Amazon, Amazon has a very specific way of seeing uh, the way to deliver uh, its services. If we compare it with a car uh, industry, it would be someone that delivers a car, delivers a road, delivers a gas station and offer the gas itself. And all that based on Amazon thing. Why do I say that? It's because you get all the services from Amazon only through Amazon API. And it's a good business. It's a good business for them. In 2013, they made something like $4 billion revenue with uh, AWS, which is quite good business. They have 70% 70 70 of, the, of the market. And let's say uh, this market represents something like 10% of the uh, IT industry today with a maximum growth. So what, what did the others, what, what are doing the other uh, contenders? Simple, they copy it. So you have Microsoft, providing the roads, providing the cars, providing everything through the same API. Google providing the same, exactly the same. So imagine a, a car industry where you, when, you buy the, when you buy the car, you have to find the, ro the right road and you can't go on another road to drive your car. But as astonishing as it, could, it looks, the open source project, open OpenStack, has almost the same way of thinking. They don't, they, no, none of these guys are speaking about open standards. All these guys are speaking about open APIs, which is, which is all right, because by nature, an API is open. But if you want to make interoperability working, you have to build it by yourself, knowing the API supplied by Microsoft, Amazon, Google, OpenStack, and then you can imagine you can talk to everyone. So can we say that's really open? And that was the question we, we had, and that's basically what we, when we started in 2011, that's where we, we our starting point. How do we make that interoperable? How do we make workloads portable from one cloud provider to another? And what about reversibility? If I want to change, I want to get back all my data, all my information, so I can move. And this is what we, we worked on. And so to do that, in fact, to do that, we have uh, built a software called Compatible One, 
I mean the platform, the software platform. And this software platform is automating provisioning whatever the provider is. And to do that, knowing that none of the providers would implement, implement for instance, OCCI as their standard to communicate with the rest of the world, we decided to implement on our platform OCCI so we can, on the platform itself, deal in a standard manner and discuss with each provider with their native language, which makes that the platform is standard. OCCI offers a wonderful way of managing and uh, manipulating objects, uh, cloud services and things like that. And this is the basic of our, uh, of our technology. Then to do that, I mean, to, to make workloads being able to be interchangeable between uh, different uh, things, we had to define the way to describe uh, cloud services, whatever the, the, the provider is. And once again, we use OCCI as a, co as a core model because OCCI offers uh, an object model and we designed something uh, that you, you find here, which is a cloud service model. Finally, the idea of being able to distribute or to provision different uh, providers is a good idea, but how do you choose that? Based on which criteria, well, what, what does that? So we decided to implement uh, a, a real-time con control, I mean, to, to, to be able to monitor all workloads deployed and to know how much it costs in terms of CPU, uh, I.O., or whatever, because we, you, we are able also to implement any kind of probe. And finally, to make sure that uh, the kind of results we, ga we get is compliant with the customer's need, we implemented SLAs. And SLAs, we implemented also in a standard manner. I mean, f from, um, we implemented WS agreement, which is a very, uh, let's say, elegant way to describe uh, what is an SLA in terms of guarantees, in terms of penalties, and things like that. And we took another very uh, disruptive approach. We know that there are some SLAs that are provided, I mean, supported by the providers, but generally the customers also have their own vision of the SLA. For instance, uh, a provider will say, okay, availability is a 9999 stuff like that. But for the customer, the maybe the most important thing would be that he wants his resources, his workload to be located in France or to be located in Belgium or not located in the States. So this is, this is where we started to play with. So the, the, we can describe the SLAs that are compatible with what the customer is expecting. And then we can compare with what the provider can provide. So for instance, if you want it in France, so we will provision um, a, a French provider from o OVH or CloudWatt or you name it. If he, if he wants it in Germany, same thing. The, the, the platform, the software will do, it, do that automatically, deploy it, provision it, and monitor it. So con being able to control what's happening, and in case there is any SLA infringement, uh, we can also uh, launch some scenarios to go somewhere else or to provide the choice to someone. So this is what we got at the end of the project in 2012. We got uh, something very interesting uh, from a point, uh, mm, uh, it was a proof of concept. And in 2013, we decided to, to, try to start to discuss with people. And when we discussed with people such as NIST, such as uh, Gartner, we discovered that in fact, we were building a cloud service broker. And all these discussions with, with those guys uh, were very interesting because they, we discovered that, they, that cloud service brokerage represents a huge business a huge market uh, that is uh, nascent, I mean, that is in, in progression. So what, is the, what does that mean? That means that traditionally in the cloud, you consume, the consumer consume in, in a silo mode. So they get everything from Amazon or everything from Subslayer and uh, Rackspace or whatever, right, their choice and they have difficulties, they can, they can do it, they can build it, but it, they have difficulties to deal with multi, multiple sources of clou cloud. 
With Compatible One, you have a single interface, single pane of glass to uh, interact with any provider. And we extended the notion of uh, what we done for infrastructure as a service to platform as a service and software as a service. So this is what, wh what we, 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 we got there. Uh, we had some quite ni nice article in the, in the press uh, demonstrating that uh, what we were doing was uh, more than interesting. So once we had that, which was a collaborative project, and by the way, another W2 project that you can find out uh, in the community, uh, W2 community, what happened in the, let's say, last month, because uh, it's in turn of months, we decided to spin off the open source project into a real company. And we are not speaking anymore about automation and things like that. We are focusing on business. We are focusing on business processes. We are focusing on ITIL. We are focusing on brokerage in order to provide to our customers a, a real uh, business solution to manage clouds. And this is the purpose of Cloud Orbit. If you look at the, the uh, architecture of what we propose, we have Cloud Orbit brokerage engine, which is enabled by Compatible One. This guy is the tier responsible for provisioning, monitoring, uh, SLA management. This guy can discuss with any of those, okay? And is discussing with the upper layer on, uh, with, through OCCI. And this upper layer is there to simplify the work of developers, okay? So for instance, if you want to create a new service on the cloud, instead of knowing all the complexity there, you can just say, create a service. And the API and the platform will collaborate to find out what the best provisioning uh, platform is for you. And finally, this API being a, a RESTful uh, API, it enables to build business applications on top of it. When I say business application, that means the, uh, the um, uh, customer facing interface that enables to manage the business because all that is about business. For instance, if you imagine that you're a cloud broker, that means that you can supply uh, your customers with any of those. You can decide by for this type of customer, Amazon is the best choice. For this kind of customer, uh, Numergy is the best choice. But of course, not the same price. So you get in the middle, you are the broker, you do the intermediation, you can resell Amazon to your customer and do uh, the cut on top of that. So you make your revenue out of that. But all that needs to that you manage a catalog, a service catalog, you manage orders, you manage uh, billing, you manage uh, customers, etc. All the business part that, that we can support with Cloud Orbit, this guy being there just to manage the technical part of the brokerage. So this is an, ex an example of uh, what we, we can do these days. We have done that with a company called Cloud Screener. And Cloud Screener and Cloud Orbit are providing all together a cloud service store where you can have from a user portal a service catalog that can be used by users, okay, in order to order services that would have been designed by the CIO or by the, the partners. All the rest is supplied automatically, business broker and technical broker, by uh, the rest of the platform. So if you want to try it, please uh, feel free to, to, to have a look at it. The advantage of such a solution is that IT division, IT department can get back control on what, their, what they, um, their user is using. Because with cloud computing, one of the risks they are taking is to have some shadow IT. So people, are, people buying directly from a business unit with a credit card to Amazon or to Salesforce without going to the IT uh, department or to discuss with the CIO team. This is the kind of thing that uh, we've done. So this is it for the presentation. And I hope that I explained cl quite clearly how to go from one point to another and how helpful uh, RW2 can be in such a end behavior.
Thanks a lot.